What's going on, Geek Tonight? It's Adonis. We're gonna be talking about iPhone 10 Plus, Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Let's get into it. Now, if you guys are fans of Geek Culture content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you have notifications turned on so you don't miss any future content. Now, before we get into the video, if you guys wanna support the channel, hit that thumbs up button on this video, show your boy some love. Or if you wanna take that step further, you can head over to Patreon or head over to the merch store but we're gonna get into Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus versus the iPhone 10 Plus. It's gonna be a crazy year. It's gonna be crazy. Now, a couple of really big features that I'm excited about, obviously being the dual aperture, that's really dope. So for those that don't know what aperture is, if you look at a lens, a camera lens, there's little blades inside that allow less light or more light. And for every phone that has ever come out prior, every phone's camera has a set aperture. You can't change the aperture of how much light is coming in. Everything is done through software. So in most cases, when the aperture is open all the way, when you're increasing the light, a lot of times you, you sacrifice sharpness in the image. So this will give you a little bit more of a sharper image when there's a lot of light available and we don't need to have the aperture wide open. Or when you need the aperture wide open, in a low light scenario, you have the option now to get more light into the sensor. Even though this is an oversimplification of what's actually going on, just know that you should have better images in the daylight when using a smaller aperture, and at night you should have a lot better low light photography. Now we're not 100% sure how this translates into video. We haven't really seen tests yet. Right now they're at Mobile World Congress. There are a couple of YouTubers right now that have it in hand. So we're probably gonna wait for those reviews to come out to see what that looks like. Hopefully Samsung can send me one so I can do a test on it. That would be awesome. That would, that would be awesome, right? Now, another thing that Samsung is touting on these two new phones is the ability for super slow motion. And we're talking about 960 frames a second. Let me say that again, 900, 960. Now, personally, I don't shoot slow motion at all. And to be honest, when I scroll through my feeds on all of my social, people don't post in slow motion. Like it, I maybe see one slow motion clip a day. And to be honest, that's a video that's actually shot in slow motion, not a video that's a funny video that they just slowed down for a part because it seemed funnier in slow motion at that time. Now what's going on here is Samsung's allowing you to record 0.02 seconds at 960 frames a second in 720p, and then it creates a six second clip because it's super slow. So, um, what I feel about it is kind of irrelevant because it really depends on what you feel about it. Do you shoot super slow motion stuff? Did you want to uh, shoot super slow motion stuff? Let me know in the comment section down below if that's a feature that you're excited about. To be honest, I'm not that hype about it, to be clear. Now, another feature that Samsung announced and they're touting is their AR emojis. <sighs> this again. Now, full disclaimer, I used to work for Apple for seven years. I was in retail. Um, I worked at like four or five stores. Trust me, I know the iPhone in and out. And I'm telling you right now, when Animojis was launched, ah, I'm sorry, I, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, it just doesn't. It's just too gimmicky. It's too gimmicky, guys, period, period. When the 10 came out, I used it twice. Since I've had this phone, I've used it twice. And if you see my iPhone 10 review, you'll see my full kind of video on that and my thoughts on the Animoji thing. So when Samsung says, hey, we're gonna try to do the same thing, I have a same similar response. I'm like, uh, okay, we're, that's what we're copying. We're copying that, we're, we're competing it with that. Come on, guys, come on. And for those of you that are saying that I'm just an Apple fanboy, my second phone is a Google Pixel 2 XL. So just, just heads up. And when they demoed the feature in their keynote, I'm gonna be honest, it, for whatever reason, reminded me of Nintendo Wii. Like you're creating your avatar in Nintendo. Like you scan your face, you scan your body, and then, or you scan your face, right? And after you scan your face, it creates an image or your, your VR self, your animated self. But then you have to change your hair. You have to add glasses if you wear glasses. You change your clothes. I think you can change your skin tone. But I'm just like, if that's the case, why don't you just create it from scratch anyways? Like, it's just strange to me where I'm like, so you use the camera so you can make an emoji of yourself that you then have to further customize afterwards. Well, that makes sense. Now, I don't have kids. I'm not sure if this is gonna be exciting for kids, um, but I know for a fact, I have not received one an emoji on the iPhone. 
not one at all. I don't know anybody that sends them. So I'm not sure how practical these animated emojis are. Um, I don't know. I just think it's easier to just send a regular emoji. And I think the simplicity in that outweighs the, the cool factor of, oh, this is actually me and doing this freak out. And I don't know. That's just my thought. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know down below. Just let me know. Now, I know some people are like, well, the S9 looks like the S8 and yada, yada, yada. And this is what I'll have to say, okay? And this probably goes a lot in the entire space of mobile. Mobile will not get any more exciting until battery technology changes for the better. And the reason why I say that is processors, everything else that people are adding into the phones are drawing more energy. So that's the first thing. Second thing, these batteries aren't getting smaller. And people say, oh, this one has better battery life. It doesn't have better battery life. It just has a bigger battery. That doesn't mean the battery life is better. It's just a bigger battery. So what we, what we need to kind of see is a paradigm shift in battery technology. If we can make these batteries smaller capacity and last longer, that's when we're going to start seeing big shifts in phone sizes again. They'll start getting smaller. Modules and things like that are getting smaller. If we have a variable aperture now in a cell phone camera that's this size, what does that tell you? That means that all these other technologies that we're trying to shrink down have now caught up to the size of the phone. Now it's like, okay, cool. When's the phone gonna get smaller? The phones haven't really got any thinner, right? They just haven't. They've been around the same size for the past four years. There hasn't been any thinning of smartphones. So battery technology needs to change for anything else to really accelerate again, I think. But that's, again, my opinion. So that's gonna do it for my Mobile World Congress side of things. I know there's a lot that we still have to talk about, so I'll leave that for the Thursday video. But iPhone 10 Plus, we have a new screen leak Let's talk about that. Now, this is the first time we've actually seen the cover glass for the rumored iPhone 10 Plus with a 6.5 inch OLED panel. Now, this will be the largest screened iPhone we've ever had, um, probably period, because the iPhone 10, even though diagonally is bigger than the 8 Plus, the 8 Plus still has, I think, more usable space. Um, I know it is wider for sure. I don't know, semantics, whatever you want to say, but this will be the largest phone that we've ever had in an iPhone. And when you look at the photos, it, I mean, it's a big piece of glass. The great part about it though, is nowadays when you look at a piece of glass like that, that's basically the size of the phone, especially in the iPhone's case, because the glass is the screen and it goes edge to edge, minus the notch. Now, the great thing about this too, is the notch actually doesn't look that big on this screen. Now it could be just the ratio, the notch to screen ratio size, um, but it does seem it's a little less aggressive as the one on the iPhone 10. Now, KGI Securities Ming Chin Kuo has been announcing stuff for oh, the longest time on Apple as far as like leaks and schematics and stuff like that for a while now. I'm talking about years. Now, I'm not sure if it's Kuo or Kuo, but I'll just say Kuo for now until somebody corrects me because I really don't know how to say it. So I, now Kuo states that the pixel density of this phone could be 480 to 500 pixels per inch, which again will be the highest pixel dense screen that an iPhone has ever had as well. I just hope that we can get a 120 hertz iPhone. Guys, I have an iPad Pro and 120 hertz is amazing. And going from that to displays that aren't that, it's it's just frustrating. It's so frustrating. Apple, get it together. Now, my biggest thing, and I've said this about the iPhone 10 Plus, I don't care that I have a full screen. Give me the software that takes advantage of this full piece of glass that I can use now with no buttons. Optimize the software, guys. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. You're gonna give me 6.5 inches of edge-to-edge -edge goodness, create some software that we can optimize for that screen size. Because right now I have a lot of screen on my phone and I'm doing the same stuff with smaller real estate in most cases that I was doing on my 7 Plus. So I'm just saying, just saying. And that's something that the Google Pixel does so well, so well is, it's optimization for the screen size that it is. So hopefully Apple gets that sorted. But outside of that, let me know your guys' thoughts on the iPhone 10 Plus and the Samsung S9 and S9 Plus. And also let me know your guys' favorite features of the S9 Plus. Obviously I didn't cover all of them, so let me know your guys' favorite ones in the comments down below. And let me know what phone you're interested in. What phone are you most excited for this year? And if I haven't covered it on the channel and it's coming out this week at Mobile World Congress, I might cover it on the Thursday show. Who knows? And if you aren't a geek tonight yet, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Have the notification bell turned on so you don't miss any future content. If you guys like this video, hit that thumbs up button, show your boy some love. And if you want to check out my latest videos, the links will be right here to the side. All right, guys, till next time.
see you later. Yeah, boy.